And then uh, for today's uh, 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 for today's event, uh, it is actually part of the uh, uh, IIDS uh, uh, AI in Ubiquitous project. And then uh, we would like to invite our uh, speaker of today, uh, Mr. On. So, uh, Mr. On, are you ready to? Uh, hi, uh, hi, everyone. Yeah. Hi, hi yeah. Dr. Rita. Yeah. Hi, 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 hi. Yeah. So, you may start now uh, when it is ready. Okay, sure. Yeah. Uh, would you mind okay, if, we, if we record it? Yeah, sure. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. some of the okay. some of them saying that they uh they they are not working in uh, in office hours, so they cannot really listen to the uh to the uh to the talk even if they want to. So uh just uh, so therefore we would just say we call it if there is no objection from your side. Thank you. Sure, no problem. Yeah. Yeah. So you can okay. actually start so, studying now. All right. So let me share my screen. Oh, yeah, can you, you assign me with the privilege to yeah, share yeah, sure, screen? Sure, 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 yeah. Sure. Uh -huh. Hold on a second, so I just assign you as a... Mm -hmm. um. Okay. Hold on a second. Sure. Sure. Okay. So I now turn you to uh, as a host. So you should be able to share your screen. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Uh, so hope everyone can see a yellow background. All yep. right. Okay, good, great. So uh, uh, let's get, get started. Okay. Um, so, um, so today we are going to uh, look at the uh, uh, H2O, some introductions of uh, H2O, the products, and then uh, followed by, uh, uh, we'll be focusing on a use case that include uh, some uh, background informations, and I will also be doing a, a demo uh, on how to use uh, driver's AI in order to uh, perform the predictions on property prices. So this segment will also include uh, 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 machine learning interpretability. Uh, so that means uh, after you have built a machine learning model to make predictions, you want to be able to understand it. And uh, so we'll, we'll also go through some financial use cases and, and other use cases as well. Uh, so before proceeding, uh, let me uh, briefly introduce myself. My name is uh, Zhong Han. Um, surname is Xiong. Uh, in Chinese, it's uh, uh, Zhong Han. Zhong Xin the Zhong Han and the Han and uh, Xing Xiong, yeah. Uh, so I joined drive, uh, H2O uh, uh, earlier this year, February 2020, and um, as a data scientist. Yeah, so I've been uh, helping customers to build use cases and uh, to get on board and to be able to uh, use driverless AI in order to transform their companies into uh, AI uh, organizations. Yeah. yeah. So before joining uh, H2O, I was at the Bank of America, Merrill Lynch in Hong Kong. Yeah. So while in Hong Kong, I was also uh, uh, doing like part-time teaching at the uh, uh, University of Hong Kong. Yeah. So oh, before I that, see. I worked for yes, yeah. So on the quantitative finance and uh, uh, analytics. Yeah. So before that, I was with the Teradata Singapore. Yeah. Okay. So that is briefly about myself. So next, I would like to introduce uh, uh, H2O company. Okay. So this is a brief a snapshot of uh, who we are. So. Uh, drivers, sorry, uh, H2O was established. So uh, H2O was uh, founded in uh, 2012 at Silicon Valley, and we have completed the Series D of our funding. And our major investors uh, are, are Goldman Sachs, uh, Ping An, uh, Wells Fargo, NVIDIA, and so on. So I would like to briefly uh, uh, talk about the NVIDIA. NVIDIA was an investor. Uh, and uh, NVIDIA uh, also is also commonly known as a company that manufacture uh, graphic processing unit, uh, GPU. So because of this, uh, algorithms in uh, H2Os are able to leverage on the GPU in order to accelerate uh, machine learning. Yeah. 
So these are the, uh, some of the major products of uh, H2O. We have uh, open source. If, in fact, H2O was founded uh, uh, mainly for the uh, 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 open source. Yeah. And in uh, 2017, uh, so H2O developed a commercial product called Drivers AI, which is a, a automated machine learning platform. So we are going to look in the more details, slightly, just slightly more details on, uh, on uh, this uh, platform. And uh, this week we have launched a new uh, product called HO Wave, so which is a platform for business users to develop uh, AI applications. Yeah. So we have offices uh, all around the world, and uh, very on and off, uh, quite regularly. And uh, we organize a Meetup.com webinar where we have a total of uh, 200 uh, over thousand data scientists and individuals sign up, and and there are over two, 20,000 companies uh, uh, using the uh, HO products. Yeah. And uh, we have uh, over 200 uh, uh, people, uh, ta talents currently at H2O. So uh, this, uh, what's so special about uh, this slide? Uh, so these are what we call the uh, Kaggle Grandmasters. So who, who actually are the Kaggle Grandmasters? So Kaggle is the, uh, it's a data science uh, competitions uh, uh, owned by uh, Google. Uh, so um, the people, uh, anyone can go in and uh, participate in the data competitions. So in order to become grandmaster, so one has to win like, many competitions and has to get like uh, on the top spots uh, for many times before they can be uh, granted as a, a grandmaster. Uh, so all over the world, there are about uh, close to 200 and uh, drivers, uh, sorry, uh, H2O AI uh, has uh, hired uh, uh, 20 of the category grandmaster, which is about 10%. Yeah, yeah. So you can also, uh, uh, imagine or consider like Hegel as the uh, the Nobel Prize of the uh, of uh, data science. Yeah, so this slide shows the uh, our team in the Asia Pacific and Japan regions. Uh, so Abi is our uh, VP in the regions, and uh, Sandeep is our director of uh, solution engineering. So Shaders is the, our uh, regional sales, and uh, in the in the the Singapore team also com consists of uh, uh, one team and uh, myself, uh, Michelle and uh, Shivam as well. So Shivam is, is uh, based in uh, Singapore and he's also one of the Kaggle Grandmasters. And uh, so these are the locations of uh, uh, H2O. And uh, so how, how are these, how are the uh, H2O products like um, uh, uh, joined together? And uh, so this is the uh, product line. So we have a uh, H2O open source. Yeah, so H2O open source uh, is a, a library where you can, uh, 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 actually uh, uh, build a machine learning model by writing the, the Scala, R or, or Python code. Yeah, so this is the open source where uh, uh, mainly used by the data scientists to develop like Python and uh, Scala code. And uh, so this is the driver's area is the commercial product. Uh, it's a platform, it's automated machine learning platform. So it simply means that you, uh, you don't have to write uh, 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 codes in order to build a, a robust and, uh, and uh, uh, accurate machine learning model. Uh, so it is a, a GUI base. And uh, so this is the H2O wave. H2O wave is where uh, it's a platform that uh, the developer use to build like a business uh, app for the business user um, uh, to use. Yeah. And uh, so we have a, a supporting product, for example, ML. ML is a, a platform where you uh, manage the uh, machine learning model that has been built. So over when have when you have a built a machine learning model, so you, you deploy it to uh, locations, uh, to a server and uh, to a cloud. And over time, so it, it might so over time, so the model might uh, degrade, and then you need a platform in order to detect that and and if necessary to retrain the model. Yeah. Okay. So uh, this. Uh, this slide is the uh, is the Gartner, so Gartner quadrant. So there are three uh, Gartner quadrants uh, that we are we are seeing here. So the first one is the uh, the data science uh, platform in terms of the completeness of a vision. So what it means that uh, which particular platform has the uh, the comprehensive tools, features, and uh, and uh, other uh, capabilities in order to complete the uh, the AI transformation for organizations. So. Uh, H2O has the uh, at the far right corner, which is at the most complete in terms of our vision, and also the uh, the uh, the completeness of the feature in the existing product. And so this is the uh, the readiness for the uh, developer to develop the AI application and AI model on cloud on premise 
and uh, on Docker and so on. Yeah, so this is a, a Forrester a quadrant, a very specific to automated machine learning uh, platform. So on the far right uh, corner, so you see Astro, which is the leader in the automated machine learning platform, yeah. Okay, so I have uh, stressed a few times about automated machine learning. So uh, let me answer the questions on uh, why why automated machine learning. So uh, what kind of value that it can uh, it brings to the to the tables and to help organizations, government, and the industries. Yeah. Okay, we just look at the the uh, the workflow or the process in, to complete or to build a machine learning model in the data science workflow. So we started on the on the on the left. We started with the collecting data. So you need a lot of data. So here I say there are. It's not just a, a, a one uh, data set or two data sets. So uh, in the uh, IoT environment, you have uh, thousands of uh, files like scattered over. Yeah. So for example, in, in the aircraft engines, so there are many components that you need to uh, need to uh, take care of, need to monitor. So each component has a sensor. So you have a, a thousand of sensors. You have a thousand of files that you can you need to uh, prepare, aggregate, and uh, prepare in order to. Uh, uh, produce um, a proper, let's say, uh, data set that has uh, column and, and rows. So each column, we call it feature. And uh, in term, in the uh, uh, area of uh, supervised machine learning, more, uh, which is, uh, for example, a classification, <laughs> document classifications, or if you want to know uh, if uh, uh, your customer is going to, uh, uh, let's say, in the credit card customer is going to default payment next month, who is going to default payment next month? Yeah, so that is the target. So I want to predict who is going to default the uh, credit card payment next month. So that is the target and you have a feature. So uh, these two combine, and then we, when, when it goes into the uh, uh, machine learning algorithms. So in the automated, uh, 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 mach uh, automated machine learning platform like driver's AI, so it will automatically perform like feature engineering. So what is feature engineering? So when you fit the, uh, the algorithm with the uh, uh, features and, and roles, so um uh, 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 Xiong, uh can can I can I uh, can I <laughs> can I stop you for yeah. a moment? Uh can you allow me to 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 uh to uh, video recording uh because it is like because I changed you to the host and therefore the video Oh okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah yeah thank you uh, uh yeah sure uh, so, uh, can you, you, uh can you assign me to like uh allow me to do the oh video yeah yeah recording? sure okay yeah because I have sent you the request uh so how uh, how do I do that? Uh, you just permit me to do the video recording. That will be fine. Allow to record. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. So is it okay now? Uh, it seems it, it is not still not recording. Not sure why. Oh, I see. The recording is on my side. I'm not sure whether it's. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. It's okay, now on my yeah, side yeah. as right. well. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Sure. All right. Okay, uh, so upon completions of uh, uh, building the model, then um, uh, you produce a bundle. A bundle, we call it the uh, uh, scoring pipeline. The scoring pipeline is actually uh, yeah, a, a package that contains a, a lot of files and an algorithm that you can use in order to make the predictions. Yeah. Mm. So optionally, then your model can be, uh, you can send your model to NLOS to be managed, to be monitored, uh, to this determine if the model is still good. Yeah, you can still predict the accurately. Yeah. Okay, so the next thing is I want to talk about the challenges. What, is, what are the challenges to becoming um, an AI company? So there are mainly three things that uh, any organizations uh, need to do, the three basic things. Uh, so one is the, uh, to be able to do feature engineering. So what is feature engineering again? Yeah. So imagine uh, uh, going back to the data that we, uh, we, we talk about. Um, many times, in fact, most of the time, the uh, data that you have gathered or you have an example uh, may not be uh, uh, absolutely suitable uh, to to be to become a, a training set or data set to to train a model. So you need to do a uh, feature engine. That means you need to create a new columns, new columns based on the existing columns, or you need to uh, get more uh, uh, data from uh, other sources, maybe from social media, from or uh, any other sources to become. Uh, 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 new columns and to be included in the in the data. So once you have included data, um, uh, certain data, certain columns have data that has a extremely skewed. So you need to uh, address those things. For example, you need to perform a square root on that. You need to uh, apply an algorithm on a, a certain columns. 
Uh, so under what circumstances that you need to apply, what kind of statistical uh, uh, techniques? So that is a skill that is a necessary, but it's crucial in order to do visual engineering. So model building, there are, there are uh, many algorithms out there. So which algorithm is suitable for a particular data set for a particular uh, use case? Yeah. So that one also takes years and uh, uh, it, uh, yeah, it takes months, if not years, it, to become uh, uh, competent. So each algorithm has its pros and cons. So you need uh, uh, a data scientist to uh, know it, it very intimately uh, 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 what can uh, uh, what can each algorithm offer. And each algorithm has a bunch of uh, parameters that you need to tune. So which parameters that you need to tune, how many to tune, how many times to tune, yeah. So, and again, the lastly, uh, a model, model deployment, yeah. So you need to uh, build uh, a wrapper, build application around the uh, uh, model. And then you need to know, like uh, uh, evaluate uh, which model is good and which model is uh, uh, not suitable, yeah. And then uh, do you go for accuracy or do you want to reduce false negative, false positive? So those are uh, 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 crucial skills that, that take time, yeah. So the, the role of uh, automated machine learning is to automate all these time consuming and complex and difficult process, yeah. So now we go one layer more in depth, just uh, one layer more in depth, what exactly that uh, drives AI uh, automates? So these are some of the, most crucial, uh, most laborious, and uh, uh, and also most time-consuming uh, steps. For example, um, uh, before before you train any model, you need to have some understandings about your model, which is statistical uh, a summary of the uh, of the of your data. Yeah, and then there is uh, something that you need to do. For example, cost validations, and uh, you need to create new features or new columns in order to be included. That and so this step is also uh, automated. And uh, you need to have a bunch of algorithms. And uh, uh, at the end, yeah, you don't know which algorithm is going to be uh, the best one. So Drivers AI will, will settle that for you. And a bunch of hyperparameters to tune. And uh, so this, uh, this is a proprietary to H2O and uh, so on. And so this part is actually the explainable part. So there are a couple of ways Drivers AI uh, explain the model. So we are going to uh, look at that. So it explains not just the model, but the result. Why was this model built? Okay, when you use this model to uh, predict certain things and it gives you the uh, prediction result. So why were uh, these results are there? So uh, on what basis that uh, this model uh, make prediction and give you that result? So everything is, can be explained, yeah. So driver's AI models are not black box, yeah. Okay, um, so let me see if there are any questions here. Um, well, uh, uh, actually, how how many uh, data mm. points that is needed? I mean, for like mm. for the uh, as you were said, uh, it's about like uh, the real time data. For example, it, it can mm. be a lot, but then uh, how 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 mm. many data points for something <laughs> that is needed? A very okay. Uh, yeah. So uh, uh, for for this question, uh, there are actually uh, two angles that you can uh, look at this. The first yeah. angle, I look at the pro product uh, viewpoint. The second one is the data science practice viewpoint. So from the product viewpoint, so that is a lower bound, which has been uh, set in within the driver's AI that you need to have a certain uh, number of rows, at least certain number of rows and a uh, certain number of columns in order to uh, uh, to uh, to be able to start an experiment or to be able to use driver's AI in order to build a model. Now, this, this, is, built, this is a set uh, by default in various AI, but you can change that. So you can change that, meaning uh, you can either lower the uh, the restrictions or actually increase the restriction, or you can uh, uh, remove the restriction at all. So that is a from from a product viewpoint. Yeah. Uh, so and uh, so this restriction was introduced also based on the, the uh, uh, data science practice, the experience by the Kaggle Grandmaster. So they know that in order to produce uh, at least a reasonable uh, model. Uh, several hundred of rows and uh, 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 so I don't remember the exact number of and ten columns so are necessary. Yeah, so that is the 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 the, the, the baseline. So I will say from the product so point, the baseline will several, be several hmm. hundred. So it does not even need to have like thousand thousand of uh, yes rows. yes. Several However, hundred. you can. Yes. However, let's say if you have a data science team with uh, using the AI, you can enforce this by uh, uh, 
uh, changing the setting to increase the lower bound to several thousand. You can also do that, yeah. But then but I would think hundred... the driverless AIs doesn't mean that it is like several hundred uh, is uh, is needed. Uh, yes, correct. Yeah. Oh, okay. Several hundred, yeah. Based on experience, yeah. So this standard, uh, this setting was uh, introduced based on the experience, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. So, uh, yeah, from data science viewpoint, the more the better. Yeah, if you have, uh, you can get uh, uh, thousands, uh, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, that would be good, yeah. So if you have, uh, have uh, 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 like tens of columns uh, to hundreds of columns, that would be uh, 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 ideal. So the more columns- Tens of columns, you mean it is like 10 columns or like- uh, 10 and above, yeah, 20, yeah. So we have uh, uh, usually, um, um, okay, uh, exactly how many should we uh, introduce? Uh, first. Uh, we look at the data and look at the data and then the, the feature, which is the column. Yeah. And then do this column make sense? So uh, am I able to uh, produce a good model? So before you do anything, you can just quickly run the model first and look at the performance. So yeah. do I get the necessary accuracy, the expected accuracy and, and other metric? So if not, then I started to think about the next step, which is what new columns to create. And uh, you can go further, right? Are there any data out there that I can uh, uh, get and then uh, manage it, transform it, and snap into the uh, this data that I want to use for training? You can also do so, that. that so is in, data. General, in general, sorry for my interruption. So in general, yeah. so for the features, how many features are needed? Like if you said it's like several hundred, several hundred rows. So mm. how about the features? Mm. How, how many features are needed in general? Okay, uh, for, yeah, it, it, uh, there is no uh, hard and fast rule on that. Uh, so what you can do is once you have a uh, uh, data, you can uh, run the baseline model using, uh, let's say, uh, the number of features that you already have. Uh, even if uh, you only have a few features, a uh, few features, uh, uh, then you can uh, just use whatever you have and run it. However, however, that is uh, uh, from the uh, uh, classification viewpoint, which is a supervised link viewpoint. Like uh, you want to do. Uh, want to uh, uh, detect, predict which customer is going to default payment. So that is the Now from the time series, let's say if you want to do a time series model, all you need to do is uh, you must have a time time column, yeah. which is a date column. Yeah. And your target, which is let's say sales volume. Yeah. You can have a daily, your date can be a daily and there's a sell volume. This two uh, uh, feature or this two column is enough to do a time series model. Yeah. yeah. So now if you want to you want to do a, a build a more robust time series model. That means you want to know like uh, uh, what actually what are the factors that uh, uh, affect what are the factors that affect uh, the uh, uh, this prediction this forecast. Then you can uh, start looking for uh, data and uh, uh, and then turn them into columns to be included into the data set. So now your data set instead of just two column time and uh, volume. So in between you have a uh, more people like uh, which branch and uh, uh, time of a uh, uh, day of week and uh, for example uh, some other events yeah that you have included yeah mm. okay so yeah. for, for for your case for example that you're trying to do like housing price for example so how yeah. many columns that may be needed in this case um okay so uh okay let me go to the next segment which is the, okay, the sure. uh, house and uh so the, the data set I, I used is from uh, uh, Kaggle. Uh, so um, H2 has a lot of Kaggle Game Master. So we are quite familiar with uh, Kaggle. Uh, so Kaggle is, uh, yeah, also has uh, tons of uh, data set out there that you can uh, download. Yeah, and uh, most of them are, are free. And uh, if you decide to participate in the competitions, uh, if, you, if, you, if you are at the, uh, let's say, at the number one spot, then you can win money. Yeah. So this data set is uh, a housing data set. So it is uh, uh, specific to the Boston area and contributed by uh, uh, this person, okay? And so this is not uh, uh, all the columns, but I have selected some of the important columns to be displayed here. And it has a total of, uh, this data has a total of uh, uh, 80, 80 columns, yeah. 80 or mm. so, oh, 18, sorry. 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, so these are the, uh, the, the columns that are some of the columns that are available and they are, this is a, a data set. So this is the, in the training set, I call this a training set. The training set means I have the result, the outcome. So this is this outcome 
is the one that I together with the future. Uh, uh, these are the things that I need to uh, help the algorithm to learn, to look at, to identify uh, uh, the, the behavior, the characteristics of each house for its, in, with respect to the price. Yeah. So if a price is yeah, somebody was willing to pay like $200,000 uh, to buy this house, so what were the features in this particular house that made somebody, someone uh, uh, made the decision to buy it? So these are the characteristics that I want the uh, machine learning model to learn. Yeah, so I have uh, 1,400, 1,600 yeah, uh, records. Yeah. So we have a uh, thousand over rows and 80 columns. So some of these, uh, let me highlight some of these uh, uh, feature. So there's a basement group and then there's a utility groups. So does is this how, uh, come, does this how come with the central air conditioning? Uh, uh, what kind of electrical installations? And then what's some, uh, many of the houses in America, they have a basement. So what, what are the things that they have in the basements? And then you have a, a, a garage what kind of garage, how big is the garage, and so on, yeah. And so those can be like uh, dummy variables and so as like uh, category variables, right? Yes, correct. Oh, yeah. okay. So, yes, correct, yeah. So for example, uh, uh, a garage type is a category uh, uh, variable, yeah. And the overall quality is the uh, uh, continuous numeric in the variable, okay. All right, so, so this is the data set. And then the, I have a, a new data set that I want to predict. So this new data set does not have a sales price. So this is a data set that I want to uh, use the model to put the price here uh, so that I can make decisions uh, and go around to shop around, yeah. Uh, 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 which house uh, that I want to buy, yeah. So before I use machine learning model, so I don't know, I don't know the price. So I, I, I need to rely on my uh, property agent. Yeah, so you need to pay your property agent for that or you need to pay somebody agent for that. Now with machine learning model, you can do an accurate prediction. So you can do, you can become your own agent. Yeah. Uh, after you have made certain decision, only you engage an actual agent. Uh, so in, the, in, in this sense, uh, actually the machine learning uh, is not to en uh, entirely replace like doctors, lawyers and so on. So they are to actually empower them. Yeah. It, 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 it gives you the ability to do certain things on your own uh, before you uh, uh, make the decision to like, pay more money and engage a more professional service. All right. So let me go to the uh, platform. So let me introduce uh, the machine learning, uh, automated machine learning platform, which is called Drivers AI. Yeah. So, so let me fire instance. So, and then uh, the first time you install uh, Drivers AI, so these are the uh, security that you need to go through. Yeah. Okay. The first thing that you see is the data page. So this is the data page. This is where. Uh, you see a list of the data that, that you, you, you have in your driver's AI. And it is also the place where you can uh, upload your data. Yeah. Mm. So there are several options to upload the data. You can upload it from uh, uh, where you have uh, installed the driver's AI. And you can you have, have a local uh, data in your local drive. You can uh, do this upload. Uh, you can also upload directly from your Amazon on Hadoop. Okay. So I'm going to upload uh, from my local drive. I have prepared some data here. So I can uh, click on this off. You can actually drag and drop. Uh, so I'm going to do drag and drop my data into uh, actually driverless AI. So I, I'm going to drop uh, the data that I'm going to use to make predictions. And so I'm going to uh, uh, include the, the unknown uh, data as well. Okay, so let me... Uh, so you just drag and drop and it will automatically upload the data for you. So once you're done, then the, your data is will appear here. Yeah. So now let me go back to the slide. Remember that what are the things that uh, uh, drive, excuse me, drivers AI optimist. Yeah. So let's look at the first one. So statistical insight and uh, visualization. So in a standard data science practice, you need to write codes or you need to use Tableau and other tools in order to do the visualization. So in a drivers AI, all you need to do is click on the detail first. And then it gives you some, uh, it tells you uh, uh, these are all the columns in your data. Yeah. And then so lastly, so this is the uh, sales uh, sales price. This is my, my target. So this is my target. Yeah. And then it gives you the uh, uh, some basic statistics, like what is the average uh, minimum value, maximum value standard deviation for that. 
you can also uh, look at this. Yeah. So this is the the table view of the data. Yeah. Okay. And then so after that you can uh, uh, click on visualize when you do visualize. So automatically it will give you without using any third party tool without writing any codes. So it automatically generates so a series of graph for you. Yeah. So exactly what kind of graphs that will come here? It depends uh, on your on your data. So drivers AI will internally will use uh, AI in order to uh, analyze the data and gives you the most relevant chart. Yeah. So if it automatic if it uh, sends or detects uh, the uh, potential outlier, it will show uh, outlier charts. Otherwise, so this one will not appear. And you can uh, and go there and uh, look at the uh, click on this potential outlier uh, to see if this is an outlier. Uh, so from there, you can make the decision whether or not to include or exclude this data in your, in your training. So there are other uh, columns that have potential outliers that you can click on uh, to check uh, whether or not you want to include. Yeah. Mm. So there are um, yes, uh, some recommendations uh, uh, also here. It, it simply means that um, these are the recommendations that you can uh, perform on your data to make uh, the uh, data uh, uh, better. Yeah. So you have a correlation chart. This correlation chart means, so what are the columns or what are the features that are correlated with each other? So you can look at the, the blue one. The blue ones are weakly correlated. So those, they are very strongly correlated. So the one in the, in the, in the, in the pink, yeah. So you can also go check that, yeah. So, and uh, so after that, now you can uh, start, uh, uh, preparing to to train a model to produce a model in order to predict the uh, the price uh, the price of the house. Yeah. Uh, so in order to do that, you can actually uh, uh you can uh, optionally you can uh, split the data first. Okay, why why do you need split the split the data? So this this data set. Uh, let's check back. Yeah, this data set it already has the sales sale price. Okay, so it's uh, the sales price is known. Okay, so I. I split the data into two. Let's say I call it price train. And then price test. Ah, so this is the one that I'm going to use to train the data. So this is the one that I'm going to uh, use to, uh, to uh, make a prediction. That means the model that I have a train using this data set, I need to make a prediction on this data set. So I already know the outcome, uh, the, the, the exact price. But I pretend I don't know, yeah. So and then so that after the prediction, then the driver's AI internally will automatically compare the actual and the predicted and measure how far are they, yeah. So that is uh, used to calculate the performance of the model, how good your model is, how accurate your model is. So that is the purpose of the uh, the test set, yeah. So how much you want to give to uh, a training and test set? So it, it depends. So it, it simply means this one I want to assign. 70% of the data to the, uh, the training set, yeah. Okay, so, and then you can, you can uh, uh, leave the driver's AI to train the model for you, uh, sorry, to split the data for you, yeah. yeah. So after that, then, then you can start building the model, okay, by, so let me just repeat. Select the data that you want to use to train the model and then, so to start training the model, you just go to predict. And then you give a name for your model. Okay, just call it price. And what, what exactly that you want to predict? Which is your target? I want to predict, I want to train the model to predict the sales price. Yeah. Because I want to roughly know how much I'm going to pay for it. Yeah. So this is going to be your test set, which you want to measure. How accurate your model is, yeah. So and then once you have selected the uh, your your target, automatically it gives you uh, some basic configuration. So these are the configuration, the four circles. Yeah, uh, accuracy means uh, uh, in drivers AI there are a bunch of uh, built-in uh, uh, algorithms. Uh, so that means if you the lowest is a uh, one to the highest to ten. So. Uh, Going for a higher number means you you, you tell driverless AI um, uh, use the uh, most complex, most accurate uh, algorithm as much as possible. Yeah. So and and then that that will be uh, that may be translated into a longer uh, training time. Uh, so if you say you can also, uh, that means you 
if you go for a lower number, it, it simply it, it means that you allow driver's AI to use some uh, not so accurate, less complex model like decision tree to participate in the training as well. Time means how many times you allow driver's AI to do experiment for you to pick the best model. Yeah. So here, I allow driver's AI to do 34 times. If I go for a higher number, and then driver's AI, that means I allow driver's AI to use six, to perform up to 64 times in, or do experiment up to 64, 54 times to give me the best model. Yeah. Uh, interpretability, in, now the interpretability uh, has two things. What is the, uh, how complex you want your feature engineering to be? Uh, that is translated to how easily your model can be understood. Yeah. So that is um, uh, machine learning interpretability. Yeah. Okay. Um, so this is the, the, the measurement. So what kind of measurement? Uh, uh, so, and uh, when you, the moment you select the target, driver's AI immediately knows what you're, you're trying to do. Yeah. So now I don't have to tell driver's AI, I just pick what I want to predict and driver's AI look at the data and see, oh, it's a continuous you make data. I, I understand that you want to do a, a, a continuous a numeric a prediction on the house price. So the most suitable uh, measurement is RMSE, which is a root mean square error. Yeah. So that's all you need. That's all. After here, you can now start uh, training the model. So you don't have to do anything else. You just click on uh, about, uh, launch. Yeah. Sorry, sorry for my interruption. Can I ask you a question? Like why yeah, sure. that people will choose to have like accuracy at three, not but not 10. So why, uh, what makes the difference between these two? Uh, you mean uh, this not? Uh, yeah, because uh, I mean for the uh, for the accuracy mm. column, you you now choose like three for example. Yeah. But uh, yes. now for for <laughs> for for us, if we want to have got a best prediction for it, what's yeah. stock, mm. for example, uh, sales price, yeah. for example, mm. then we may have got an idea that it's like we we, we prefer to use like uh, the the highest accuracy so that we will know like for example tomorrow what is a wise price for example. Mm. And, mm. Uh, so so uh, not so good yeah. uh, uh, mm. accuracy prediction. So why that? Uh, I mean, there will mm. be like one to ten. So why not all the circumstances that we try to use ten? So what are the drawback by the time mm. that we use like ten, for example? Okay. Yeah. So there are a few reasons. Um. Uh. Based on uh. uh okay. Hold on. Let me create another experiment to demonstrate. Yeah. Uh. Okay. So we allow the existing to go on and let's take, yeah. Uh, okay, go back and the uh, sales price. Okay, yeah. So this one, um, I uh, that means, uh, okay, if you go for 10, uh, so that might seem to be the best way. To, so there are a few considerations. Uh, one, one is the time, yeah. So, um, Another one is uh, this one, if you go for 10, that, that will also be uh, translated into time. Now, um, from, uh, from our, our, our experience, uh, going for 10 is not always the best. Sometimes oh, in, certain, uh, in certain use cases, um, let's say a lower, a lower number could produce a better, yeah, a better a model, a better model in terms of generalizations, that means how good it predicts a new data, that's generalization. So going for 10, so that is a possibility of, uh, uh, if you have heard of like overfitting, yeah. Oh, okay. So that could happen, that's... yeah, that could happen, yeah. So, uh, so if so... that's the case, how can we know that there's like overfitting uh, in this uh, model, RMSE okay. or what? Okay, uh, uh, one way of uh, knowing whether or not it's uh, overfitting is to uh, compare with your test set, yeah, okay. so. Uh, let me uh, okay. Let me go to uh, for example. Um, okay, hold on. Okay, I have. Uh, let me bring out another model. Okay, so uh, this was a. Uh, this will explain, yeah. Okay, I, I think I might have uh, some report here. Uh, okay, 
just hold on there. Yeah. Okay, for example, uh, I have a, that a card card, uh, predictions. Yeah. And uh, this let me show you a very specific. Uh, okay, um, so we'll, 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 we'll let, let the experiment run. Okay, uh, uh, let me highlight here. Uh, what you're seeing here is the complete, once the experiment is complete, the model is built. This is what you'll see. Okay, yeah. so the answer to the questions can be uh, obtained from the automat automatic report. So this is the automatic report. So download the automatic report. Yeah. So let me download this automatic report. And I have a configuration, the high configuration was 743. Okay. And then let me compare to another model, which is a lower configuration. Yeah. So this is the lower configuration. And I download this report as well. Yeah. So let me, uh, uh, before we go uh, in that, let me uh, show you what the uh, uh, re report con contains. Yeah. So what, what kind of information can you get from this report? So this is a explanation to the model. Later, we are going to go into the explanations of the results, yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah. So this is a report. Yeah. So it has the uh, overview of the, the configuration that you use, and then it explain uh, your data. This is the data that have uh, you, you have used, and these are each of this is a is a is a column, and some statistical data of the column, and during the training. So what was the how how did the process look like under the hood during the training, okay? And what was the measurement that that you want uh, the AI to focus on, okay? And uh, and uh, so this is a uh, in, in each iterations what was the algorithm used and the feature used and final. Yeah, so this is the feature transformation. Yeah, so let me let me compare this model with uh, another word document, and you see. Uh, okay, this is another another one. Yeah, so for the same uh, data set for the same uh, objective of our, uh, what I want to predict uh, between. A uh, high number, high uh, high interpretability and low interpretability. Yeah. So this is tells you that the the most important uh, factors that affects uh, uh, the uh, the default of a credit card is this feature. Yeah. And uh, this is the second most important feature, the third and fourth most important feature. But if we if you look at the uh, the high the high uh, a low interpretability that means you you want the co uh, model to use the complex method and complex tra uh, tra transformation so this is this is the most important feature so it's actually a transform feature so this is the uh, uh, less it, this is this can be understood more easily compared to this yeah so that is the the the, the thing yeah so that means how easily that you want your model to be understood so does it mean that because the one on the left hand side that yeah. there is uh that is not clear as the one on the right hand side because the right hand mm. side has already got like which feature that is dated clearly but then on the left hand side the features that is dated in the first uh most important feature for example it is unknown yeah. actually oh, okay i uh, yeah something like that yeah okay and uh, so if you com if you compare, uh, so and then there's a slight in terms of accuracy, the complex feature will have a like like slight a slight gain. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the difference. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so now you can make a decision. Um so 81, 81 and uh, 82. So does it matter? So that depends on your uh, say on your requirement. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So so that is the thing. Let me see if there are under, any other questions. Okay, so for no. the for the data uh, hmm. that you suggest yeah. that there may be like high uh, overfitting by the time that yeah. it use a high prediction uh, uh, prediction uh, weight hmm. at hmm. ten for example so yeah. uh, from the hmm. from the experiment you just said so how can hmm. we justify that there's an overfitting circumstances they happen which part yeah. they so tell you, us there's an overfitting yeah so here you can compare this to the final test score and the final uh, uh, the validation and test score. So if you have a, a, a big difference, 
uh, let's say this is not 81, this is, uh, I call it like minus, uh, minus five, like 70, let's say 76, okay? Uh, hypothetically, let's go for 76. So you see there's a 76 on the test set, 82% on your validation set, mm. they could be a potential uh, overfitting, could be, yeah. So what do you do? And then in the standard practice- Why, why then is yeah, it overfitting mm. by the time it is like 76 instead of like 82? So, so then, yeah. So that means there is a uh, like five percent difference, yeah. So that means uh, how how severely is this uh, uh, overfitting? Uh, that means how um, how uh, how severe is this overfitting? Would you consider? Uh, so that depends on your use case on your requirement as well. Yeah. So what you can do is you can actually rerun uh, uh, this experiment, probably using. Uh, uh, a different configuration, different settings. Uh, you can use a different settings at the different uh, and, uh, and the different uh, uh, iterations and different scorer. Yeah. Okay, one more so question. Are, yeah. One more question. Um, yeah. Like for example, that you mentioned is, is like there is a discrepancy mm -hmm. between the two numerical figures. So how large is yeah. this acceptable? How small that is not acceptable? Like uh, there's like 0 0.55 and 0 0.56, there is no overfitting. And then uh, like 0.82 and 0.76 7, 7, is the overfitting. So <laughs> what, what may be that, the acceptable what, range there? So that one would be, it will depend on your, 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 on your team. So that means on your uh, policy. Yeah. So what policy? Uh, it, it is very similar to, let's say, risk appetite. It's, yeah. So would you want to uh, uh, consider this? That means, would you uh, consider this as overfitting? Is this overfitting okay? Uh, so that one is, uh, would be uh, very much depending on yeah, your team's policy or, uh, or organization so policy. So is there any yeah. literature yeah. that suggests that this is like mm. overfitting and that is not overfitting? Because um, that uh, it is mm. very, it, it will be easier to explain if yeah. like we know that for example, the discrepancy is like 0.01, then mm. Uh, mm. we'll see in the range, for example, 0.01 mm. to like 0.03, that is acceptable. Mm -hmm. And then other than that, that is not acceptable. Uh, you can also have that policy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so means, uh, uh, it is, okay. Uh, it, 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 so besides that, there are other factors that you might want to, you, you might want to consider as well, which is uh, this one. Yeah. So that means you look at the, uh, the four positive and false negative as well. Yeah. So it's not just the uh, uh, accuracy. Yeah. And then, uh, so other consideration, I guess, okay. Uh, so what kind of uh, use case or what kind of circumstances uh, uh, that uh, accuracy is less important than let's say for positive and false negative. Let's say aircraft engine maintenance, aircraft engine, yeah. So in uh, aircraft engine maintenance, that means you want to reduce the uh, false negative as much as possible. It is okay for her to have a slightly higher false positive uh, because false positive uh, tells you that the aircraft engine does not need uh, uh, need really need maintenance, but it gives you the false sense that you need to go and check it out. So that is not really a, 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 a bad thing. But the bad thing is that if the aircraft engine is about to go down and uh, your model tells that it is still good, then that would be a critical, that would be a life ending. Yeah. So it all depends on, uh, on, on, uh, on the use case actually, yeah, on the business case, the objective, uh, uh, yeah, uh, what kind of problem that you want to solve? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So yeah, so these are some of the, the factors. Uh, so there is, uh, in conclusion, there's no uh, hard and fast rule. So it's a 2% distance uh, um, uh, acceptable. Uh, that depends on the, on, on the case, on the business as well, yeah. Okay, uh, so, okay, uh, let's go uh, briefly to, uh, to the uh, 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 explainable, okay, and Let's go to look at the uh, okay, this new building. Okay, let me bring out the one that has been uh, completed. Yeah, so this is the completed one. Yeah, if you go to uh, okay, before that, now you want to make a prediction. Okay, before I go to uh, explain the model, now you have uh, in hand your a list of uh, housing houses that you want to consider. You don't have the price. You want to know the price, yeah. So it has a one thousand five hundred. Uh, so this is the one, and then we go click on this, and uh, okay. So from here, so which, uh, which feature that you want to include in your report? 
in your prediction report. So you can uh, choose uh, with whichever you like, and then you can choose all, and then click done, and then it will, it will make the prediction for you. So let me open up the one that has been uh, completed. So this is the completed. This is how the predict the report of your prediction looks like. Yeah, let me open it up. Yeah. Okay. So this is the uh, the the unknown data. The unknown that I have, and I want to know the price. Yeah. Mm. So this is the price predicted price for each of the housing. So and then what can you do with this? Uh, you can actually uh for example just filter uh okay uh, just filter. I want to buy. Uh, so, so the the most probably the most expensive or the cheapest. Again, you can do the sort, uh, sort by okay, uh, sales sales price. Yeah, okay. I want to do the, go for the cheapest. Yeah, the cheapest. Okay, and then you look at this. Uh, so which which house is this? So this is a house. And look at the other feature. So is this a good buy? Is this house uh is a problematic and so on and so forth. And uh. So on top of that, you can do additional uh, analysis. For example, these are some of the analysis that you might want to do. For example, so you want to know like in Boston's area. So this is the uh, the, the predicted uh, house prices, and then you look at the uh, the the known prices. So see how different they, they are. So uh, pretty much just pretty much uh, uh, in sync the predicted one. So the, the as historical with the predicted one. Yeah. Uh, so most of the yeah, Boston, most of the house in the range of like uh, between hundred and two hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, so that is the the uh, the, the high probability of uh, in terms of price that you can get at the uh, Boston's. Yeah, okay. Um. So there are uh, some other uh, things that uh, analysis that you can do. So you look at total uh total uh, square square meter or square foot, and then with the uh, with the price and then. So the blue one is the two story and then one story. So you can uh, have this kind of, uh, so it makes sense that the two story is always like, uh, uh, it's more expensive than the, uh, the, uh, the, 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 one, the one story. And uh, of course it is a bit, uh, bigger in terms of uh, total floor space. Yeah, so you can do other analysis as well. And this one is the uh, uh, total, uh, uh, total space and sales price in terms of uh, this one would be, uh, so the this one area. is actually the uh, actual mm. that is run on the Python, right? Oh, this is a uh, yeah. This is Python. This is uh like you, you can you, you can do this sort of analysis using Tableau, yeah. Uh, but I I just I just uh, do this in a uh, Python, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. So these are the post prediction analysis that you can do, yeah, yeah. So you can uh, uh have a rough idea on uh what is the highest probability of in terms of price that you can get. So between hundred and two hundred thousand. And yep. then, so, uh, and how would the uh, price change uh, uh, with respect to, let's say, a house style, the lot area, yeah, and then the street, yeah, the, ki the, the kind of street, is it a paved street, is it a, a, some other road uh, type, yeah, so these are the full prediction, yeah. So this is uh, uh, roughly uh, what we can uh, do in, in terms of our predictions, yeah, and then, so let's go briefly, talk about the uh, interpretability. Yeah, interpretably, uh, so these are the few things that you can uh, get. And uh, this is the feature importance, okay? So there are several ways of uh, looking at the feature importance. You can look at it at the, at the, the simple calculation or you want to complex the calculation. Let's look at the simple one, the simplest one. Yeah, so it tells you that what actually affect the price? What, what was the most important factor affecting the, the selling price? The overall quality. And then followed by the total floor square. Uh, followed by the uh, the living area, the lot area, it means the total area. So this total floor space is a house, the building. This is the, the, the house plus land plus garage. Yeah, and then and so on and so forth. Yeah, uh, so that means if you want to go for a, a, a good one and then and cheaper, uh, you should look at the overall quality. Um, uh, maybe if you uh, want to get a, a really good one, really really good one and not so expensive you might want to let's say compromise a bit on the four square yeah on the lot area and the year build I means uh, look for the don't uh i mean to be too fussy about the the age of the house look at the overall quality and then you might get a good deal yeah so these are the the uh, some of the decision making uh, capability that you can uh, gain from the machine learning yeah okay yeah so you can do a, a sensitivity analysis as well uh, what can you do now? 
this is the outcome of your prediction. Okay, so this is target, this is the outcome of prediction. You can okay, change certain value. Okay, if I go for, okay, this one, the uh, total floor space is uh, one, one seven, and I, I will pay 200,000. So if I, if I go for a little lower, like 1,000, just 1,000 square foot, yeah. So what kind of uh, price that I, I, I will most likely uh, have to pay? And then you can uh, uh, rescore it and repredict it, and it will give you a different value. Yeah, for example, now uh, it's still, so if you go for a, a, a 1,000 square foot, yeah, without changing the rest, it still remains at the 200,000. Yeah, so these are the, the things I can do, yeah. yeah. In the uh, using so uh, and also uh, which one that you keep mm. and then you will have got what kind of changes? Sorry. Uh, can you repeat the question? Mm. Uh, uh, I mean, just now that how can you tell, like for example, that the explainability is uh, uh the explanations that are provided by the time that we yeah. conduct mm. the uh, sensitivity analysis? Yeah. Uh, so I change a certain value, uh, and then I try to rescore it, repredict it, so to see if that selling price changed as well. So in that case, it did not change. That means there are other factors that I need to change in order to affect it. Yeah. So you can do, you can change the uh, those other value and, and, and try to get, yeah, you can do a try and error. So, so there's a kind of like is, feature uh, that you try to like work on, change the feature value and then- a Change, yeah, manip manipulate, yeah. Manipulate, oh, okay. yeah, yeah. Okay, so <laughs> thank you. Once you, okay, you are uh, back to that, that, that uh, what if, right? You like that house, but 200,000 is slightly pricier, okay? So now you can compromise on certain factors, so you change the, the one. Let's say it gives you the prediction, let's say 180,000 finally, or oh, it's the one that you want. So based on the, what you have changed, you go back to the to uh, this big, uh, this data set, and try to look for which particular, which other house that has that feature that met your price, yeah. So, and then you get the list of that, yeah. From, from, from this uh, 1,500, maybe it's uh, 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 narrowed down to, let's say, uh, 15 houses. So that gives you, the 15 is, uh, uh, is much less than the 1,500. So it gives you um, a more, uh, give you a higher confidence uh, that you, you uh, how likely that you get what you want. Yeah. So that is a decision uh, supporting tool. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Okay. Uh, so okay. So that's uh, roughly uh, uh, the uh, uh, how we use drivers AI in order to predict uh, prices and what can we do uh, in order to understand the uh, the, uh, the the model and what can we do in order to uh, uh, support our decisions and uh, uh, what other post predictions analysis that you can do in order to uh, like say increase your confidence in your decision making process. Yeah. Okay, so uh, we'll, we'll go on and look at the, uh, some other stuff. So uh, this is our uh, uh, manufacturing use case. Uh, so what I want to highlight here is that, and this is a like, standard process. So this is uh, your data collection process. And uh, uh, in between, you might need to like uh, uh, transform the data and uh, uh, add more columns to it, and then do uh, some calculation on your data before it can uh, become a good data. Uh, to train a model. So the, this is the process of training a model without an uh, automated platform. You need a lot of data scientists to do uh, first statistical profile, visualization, and build the, a lot of model. Um, a lot of model, you need to choose the best one. And then if you don't get the best one, you need to redo the efficient engineering and retain the model. So this is a cycle many, many, many times. And uh, after that, you need to uh, uh, manually interpret the model and manually write the report that we have seen. Uh, so without an uh, automated platform, you need to uh, uh, get somebody to write a report and deploy it and to, to go into the production. Yeah. So with the driver's AI, this big, this big chunk has been automated, will be automated. So because it's, uh, 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 this, this tedious process are automated, then you don't really need a lot of people here. So you can uh, reassign them to work with the, the domain expert, the physicists, chemical engineers to uh, produce a, a better material, uh, a better uh, data collection process, better manufacturing process, and so on. Yeah, yeah. Um, so what I want to show, uh, besides the uh, you know, able to predict uh, the housing price, there are a lot more things that you can do with the uh, automated machine learning platform. Yeah, so these are some of the experience, actual experience to help the uh, banks and financial services in uh, credit scoring and uh, uh, how to de uh, detect fraud. So is this transactions a fraudulent transaction? Is this credit card transaction a fraudulent? Yeah, 
and uh, shall we approve uh, approve approve the uh, loan application for this customer? So what was his credit score? And then will he default payment and so on and so forth? Yeah. So they have a, a bond pricing as well, which is similar to to uh, uh, housing pricing, but uh, bond pricing uh, requires a lot more uh, data transformation and feature engineering. Yeah. So this is an investment company that has uh, used uh, driverless AI uh, automated plat uh, driverless AI automated uh, machine learning platform for uh, some of these uh, use cases. Yeah. And uh, so this is a uh, Capital One, uh, one of the very large. Uh, uh, one of the major uh, Ashlow customer. It has uh, produced, uh, built like uh, over thousands of models for for different uh, use cases from from the uh, 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 fraud detections to marketing to marketing and then on the IT operations. Yeah. So this is, these are some of the examples for insurance. Uh, okay, you use a machine learning model to predict to predict uh, uh, again fraud. So fraud is a uh, uh, is is very common uh, for insurance and uh, and bank. And uh, uh, call center uh, optimization of car insurance, and uh, predict which uh, insurance agent is going to perform. Uh, so how uh, they predict how the each insurance agent is going to perform in the in the, in the in, in the coming years, coming months, and so on. And uh, customer churn is also a concern for not just insurance for telco. Uh, so you subscribe to a certain uh, uh, telco, and uh, so the telco company want to predict. Okay, will you go to another telco company next year? And then if the prediction says uh, yes, then it looks at the feature, your feature variable importance or feature importance. So what are the factors that, that is going to push this customer to go to another uh, uh, telco service, service provider? Yeah, so can you do anything about it? So if you say that you can do something about it, so what exactly can you do? You can, can look at the variable importance. Yeah, and so on. Yeah, so this is the uh, uh, a little bit more, more, more detail on the, uh, 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 on the insurance use case. Um, so the benefits that the uh, the company gets from is a conversion rate of uh, about 3%. So that means um, you make a, a, a scoring for each individual, how likely that you will take up your offer. Yeah. So by looking at the model and uh, looking at the uh, 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 prospect who has the highest probability of uh, becoming a customer. So you focus on those and then you get the them to convert. Yeah. So this is insurance engine uh, performance optimization. Uh, see uh, uh, who is going to be a high, predict who is going to be high performer or not so high performer, and what were, what what are the factors that uh, push somebody or motivated uh, someone to become a, a, a excellent uh, agents or not so excellent agent? Yeah. So you can actually uh, do something about it, and based so on the this is like for the prediction of which sales that they may have got the mm. highest sales by the time they work later. Yeah. Yeah, but but why that is is the optimization mm. because the optimization is like for example we try to have got the uh, stock mm. prices we have got different stocks and then we try to optimize it so then we have mm. got the stock prices optimization <laughs> and see which one correct components, yes. components at in so for this one I I I'm just curious mm. <laughs> how how mm. they can okay do yeah okay so first of all uh, there are three steps here okay first step. Uh, uh, look at the uh, sales volume for each agent, and then you can uh, categorize it at uh, above fifty thousand uh, is considered as uh, excellent, below it as uh, uh, not so. Okay, uh, zero and one, and then you look at the uh, those who uh, has been uh, scored uh, with uh, with a zero, and then look at the uh, variable importance. So the variable importance are uh, how well how well is uh, each agent uh, perform in uh, certain areas. So that one is a uh, 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 display as the uh, the, the the numbers that 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 accompany the variable importance. So for the variable importance, you pick a few that would be your uh, uh, items to invest in your portfolio. Yeah. So for example, that three three uh, uh, factors, uh, let's say factor A, B, and C can be made equivalent to your portfolio, uh, your uh, items in the portfolio: Microsoft stock, a uh, bond, or uh, 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 some uh, let's say ETF. Yeah. So you can now you know uh, uh, which factor that affect these agents. You can apply the very same optimization method to actually to improve the performance of the uh, this a agent. So uh, uh, commonly we use like convex optimizations, uh, uh, Kuntaka uh, and uh, duality uh, uh, concept and, and theory. So these are the the the, the common technique used in uh, stock 
and the uh, equity optimizations. And you can use the same in, in uh, issuance agent as well. And you can use the same in, let's say, select your supplier. Which supplier uh, uh, is the uh, uh, riskiest that you, 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 you order, for example, um, in the COVID-19 uh, uh, COVID uh, uh, scenario. So you have a different, different supplier that supply like face masks. So which one is the uh, highest risk or lower risk in terms of the quality of face mask or in terms of vaccine as well? Yeah. So it's, a it's not a direct. So a direct AI does, does not directly give you the optimization. So you can make use of this result in order to design your optimization. So that is a, yeah. And we have an ongoing project in, in, in these few areas as well, in the supply chain, uh, as well as the healthcare. Yeah. So the downstream processing is the convex optimization technique. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, thank uh, so uh, customer chain, yeah, thanks. Uh, customer chains, uh, yep, in any organization, not just telco, yeah. So any service uh, providers, uh, so this is uh, something that keep a lot of executive awake at night, yeah. So customer leaving, yeah. So how, what do you do that? Predict who is going to leave and can you do anything about it? Uh, can you do a personalized marketing? Yeah. And a fraud, again, so fraud is a very serious thing in, a, in, in bank and uh, insurance. Uh, so if you... Uh, if you are not careful and uh, let a few fraudulent case pass and the uh, regulatory body comes and you don't really have a try to say that I, I don't know, I'm not aware. Yeah. So, so you need the uh, like, uh, machine learning tool in order to very quickly and very accurately predict uh, which one is uh, a fraudulent transaction. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so apart from uh, economics and financial use cases, uh, these are some of the uh, use cases that have built, uh, government use cases. And uh, uh, what we have uh, seen so far is the Tableau data, the, the, the normal uh, data set. We can also uh, do image classifications. So recently we, uh, we have a built use cases like uh, to detect like the brand of the gun, the brand of the gun from, from the bullet images. And, uh, and from the same bullet images, can we detect determine like how many times the gun has been used to fire and so on and so forth. Yeah. So these are some of the uh, 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 cutting edge, yeah, cutting edge uh, use cases uh, in manufacturing uh, here. And uh, we have uh, briefly talked about the maintenance of aircraft engine. Yeah. And uh, uh, how, to, how to select the best hey, material what, what, for what manufacturing. Question, what question? Uh, yeah. Because I also yeah. do NLP, but then how yeah. to like predict the next blockbuster just for mm -hmm. literature? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, this one is a is a extremely complex. Uh, uh we can we can uh, if you're interested, we can have another sessions on on this one. Okay. Uh, sure, sure. Yeah. It's uh yeah the the complex part is uh the the data processing, uh the text processing on on that. So okay. Uh, very briefly. Uh, so I I uh if you heard of a uh, uh, PubMed, PubMed is a U.S. government website. I, they, I know. They have, I know PubMed. Ah, okay. 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 PubMed. You stream the uh, PubMed scientific extract. I put them in a range in the in the in the in the table. So that is API to do that. So you don't have to, uh, yeah, you don't have to uh, uh, scratch your head on that. So it will give you a, a proper table like the journal article, the abstract, the uh, 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 journal number, volume, the author, affiliation, and so on and so forth. Yeah. So and then uh, uh, I, I go to uh, uh, some other uh, uh, data sources and look for the the drug that has been approved. And then try to find that in the, from the scientific extract and label them accordingly. So I labeled a bunch of uh, uh, those uh, uh, journal article uh, uh, based on my uh, some other research as one. That means they, those articles, those abstract contains uh, uh, a text that describe about that describe the uh, the drug that has been approved. And then there are a bunch of articles that describe the drug that were not uh, uh, approved. So I label those as zero, zero and one. Yeah. Uh, so, and then I fit into the machine learning and then train it. And then I, again, I stream the latest, the latest last six months article and try to find which article that uh, potentially talks, uh, uh, has potentially, has potential information about uh, the drug that is going to be approved. Yeah. So I managed to make a few predictions and a few candidates came into the picture. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. yeah. So I do remember the, uh, the, the target names, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, so the accuracy was about uh, yeah, about 90, 90, 95%, yeah, yeah. Okay. So we'll see. So we'll wait for a few more months and then we'll see if uh, uh, first drug, yeah. So the, the value of this, this prediction is that one drug approved, uh, this drug is actually the biologic drugs, the, uh, for example, the antibody to treat cancer. So one drug approved for, for, for a pharmaceutical company is means, means 
$2 billion of revenue a year for straight 15 years. Yeah, because the patents usually last for 15 years. So that means one drug, such drug approved, yeah, so you can just sit there and relax and money comes in $2 billion every year. Yeah. So what value does it bring to the investor? You can use this to find out what's the next drug to be approved, and then you approach the scientists or the institution, and then, hey, let's work together, I'll invest in your, in your lab. Yeah. So yeah, this is some of the uh, it, it, economy things that we can we can we can do using address AI. Yeah. Um, okay. So this is the yeah the, the last slide, and uh, so we conclude the uh, presentations of uh, what we can uh, uh, use driverless AI for, and what barriers that it can bring, and then uh, the difference between using and not using automated platform. Yeah. So. Uh, in the chat, is there any question from the, in the chat box? Okay, no question. Um, any other question from the floor? Well, I have got one more question, sorry. <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah. Question. Um, so, uh, uh, that there are like sensitivity value to test whether or not that uh, it, uh, I mean, mm. uh, change in one factor, they will affect the housing price change, for example. So. Yeah. Um, how to tell, the, uh, how to tell, like, for example, shape P value, I have also uh, observed that there is an AUC. So, mm -hmm. uh, uh, what are the value of like shape, uh, shape lead value? And so as an AUC in the, uh, in the, uh, in, in this software. So AUC, uh, okay. Shape lead, uh, AUC, AUC is actually uh, another measurement, uh, for that compare between false positive rate and uh, true positive rate. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, that is the, the diff okay, the AUC graph. Okay, let me share my screen with you. Uh, how do you know that the AUC tells you that it is a, a good model and, uh, and it's, it's not a good model? Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, let's, okay, let's open up this credit card. Okay, uh, so very briefly, very briefly at very high level, okay, this is the AUC. So the more the, the curve goes to this direction, the better. Yeah. So yeah. the higher the AUC is, the better. Yeah. So that is so the acceptable yeah. value uh, uh, for AUC. Oh, ah, okay. Like uh okay. Um I'll say like this this is considered a accept uh I mean accept, sorry, accepted or reasonable. Okay. Um okay, there is no uh Okay, there's no uh, 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 specific rule on that, but uh, I would say like uh, more than 70 is uh, 70. That means try to get above 70, yeah. Oh, okay. So that, yeah. that also depends on your team and, uh, and uh, okay, for example, like uh, aircraft engine, uh, going to aircraft engine that this might not be a good model, might not be a good model. Yeah, so you need to have, because aircraft engine is about life and death, so you need to go like close to 90 or okay. 80 and above, yeah, yeah. So that is a, so it depends on the use case. So for credit card fraud, oh sorry, for credit card uh, default payment, uh, this is this is okay, acceptable, probably more, more than enough. But for transaction, for fraudulent transaction, for uh, terrorist financing, this is not uh, more, probably not uh, so so good. Yeah, you should go for like if so that means um, the why, why that yeah. this is like why uh, how to determine like one area that is good another area is not good uh area do you mean uh in like, for example of, what you say is it's like uh, in one uh research field that use, uh, open yeah. something is good and then in another research field probably it's not good so how can mm. we uh justify for our case by the time that say for instance it has not been done in other areas in my research, mm. for example, there is no such mm. research before. So how can we justify that it is good or it is bad? Mm. Apart from what okay. you say is the open mm. seven. Oh. Yeah. So uh, okay. Uh, apart from uh, AUC, which is uh, your baseline uh, reference uh, for yeah. for let's say to determine the no. Uh, so uh, I mean, okay. So in your research area, so is this good enough? I mean, is AUC good enough? Uh, without looking at other uh, other uh, um, measurements, uh, okay, that also depends on uh, use case. Uh, for very very critical mission critical uh, uh, law enforcement, you you and uh, so this could be this could be uh, not sufficient. You need to go to look at the false positives and false negatives as well. 
Okay, one and one case is that you want to uh, predict once uh, the uh, prisoner is released from your prison, how likely that you will come back. So for in in, uh, in law, law enforcement in government, even in economics, economic, this is critical. Yeah, so you want to reduce the false uh, false negative as much as possible. Yeah, yeah. False positive in that case, false positive might might not be so critical, but false negative critical. Because okay. each time the uh, the uh, each time the uh, ex prisoner come back to prison, it means economic pressure. So the government needs to spend more money to to uh, maintain the prison, maintain the prisoner as well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it depends on the case. Yeah. Uh, again, for marketing, uh, credit card default probably not so critical. Probably accuracy would be would be good enough. Yeah. Yeah. So how about Shipley value? How does uh, uh how does the Shipley value allow us to uh, know whether or not that is a good model or bad model? Okay, uh, Shipley value does not give you whether or not a good model or bad model. It tells you uh start as a little bit more on the variable importance. So the variable importance that we saw, like uh, which one is the most important, the second most important, and third most important. Shipley value tells you its impact. Is it positive or negative impact? So. Is it going to push the uh, prediction towards zero or towards one? Yeah. So it, it gives you slightly more information on that. So that's the difference between Shapley and the one that we saw. So the one that we saw is a simple calculation. We only know uh, uh, which, which factor has the highest impact. Yeah. So Shapley video tells you which uh, factor has the highest, highest impact and in which direction. Yeah. So that's the difference. Yeah. So Shapley value is based on uh, 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 game theory, yeah. Uh, so they use, uh, they borrow a calculation from game. So it is a very recent thing, yeah. So we have included that into into the uh, the um, uh, diverse AI as well, yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. So what, what is the main, main difference between like the uh, HO one that is in Python and so as the one that is in this uh, platform? Like oh, for okay. example, uh, some of them that is not available like interpretability, sensitivity, or Shapley value. So, what is the major difference between these two? Uh, you mean uh, uh, no, this uh, one? Python H two O and so as like the driverless AI. Okay, uh, Python H two O. Okay, uh, if you're talking about the, let me go to, uh, where is the slide? Okay, wait. Uh, I close it already. Okay, let me just uh, hold on. Let me let me reopen it. Uh, Okay, so the one that we use Python to do code is uh, this part, which is open source. So that yeah. means uh, if you, uh, this is, uh, it, it requires, uh, let's say developer or data scientist to write codes. Yeah, yeah. if you want to use this. And uh, another difference is that uh, this H2O can also like sit on top of, uh, are you familiar with the Hadoop and Spark? Yeah, it, it, can, it can leverage on the power of a Spark uh, in a, in a, also in a Hadoop environment. Yeah, yeah, in order to, yeah, to, to do. So, um, okay, uh, we have uh, uh, customers who uh, recently uh, converted from uh, the H2O open source to, to uh, using a uh, driverless AI, yeah, yeah. So H2O open source, it comes with a bunch of library uh, where you can uh, make, make use of that to build a very reliable model as well. But yeah. at the end, there is still uh, a code that needs to write, but not as much as uh, using some other open source. Yeah. So because the library that comes that comes with the H two open source already has a lot of pre built feature. Uh, although you need to uh, write code, but uh, not as much as uh, uh, some other open source tools. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, it can also leverage. I mean, it can uh, do multi node uh, uh, training if uh, by leveraging on the uh, uh, Spark as well. And then there is also a library that is uh, uh, also from uh, uh, H2O that enables you to make use of a Spark as well as a GPU. So driverless AI inherently has the capability of uh, using GPU to train a model, which can accelerate the training, uh, the, the model training process by reducing the duration of the, the training by uh, uh, tremendously, by, by a lot. Yeah, so we have uh, cases that uh, in the NLP is uh, uh, three times faster and we always we also have a cyber security use cases that we with, with or without a uh, uh, GPU, and then the time difference is about twenty over hours. Yeah, so we have the yeah. 
So we did that that uh, uh, benchmark and that uh, for the government of Singapore. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Mm. So yeah. so uh, both of them have got uh, the like uh, sensitivity uh, testing, interpretability, time mm -hmm. training. All of them they yes. are uh, on the both sides yeah. that they have mm. got these. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Correct. I see. I see. Yeah. Uh, uh, let me see if our shaders is still the shaders. Do you have anything to add? It's a shade. Uh, no, I'm I'm good. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. And uh, recently we have also building a, a image classification model. And on uh, let me go to the last slide. And on the uh, this one, the attack crime hotspot, and uh, this tree. Yeah. For for Hong Kong government. Yeah. Uh, okay. A law enforcement in uh, Hong Kong. Yeah. So oh, yeah, we are doing that. Hong Kong well. government yeah. for what detect the firearms. Um, uh, Shaders, do you have a detail? Um, this is more of a public order use case, but I yeah. think we are not at the liberty to discuss too much details yeah. about it. Yeah, yeah. So I think there's a restriction on discussing those things. Okay, yeah. okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but, but then for the image classification, what kind of things that it can be like done uh, for like object detection? Or uh, what detection again? Can object you detection. You because something? like they, we have got like object, object detection, detection and uh. also object <laughs> recognition. So for classification, it can be like detection or recognition. Okay, if you're talking about the specific object uh, detections, uh, uh, like the specific uh, object, like is it a scissor, is it a, a basketball? And in the human, in the, on the human side, uh, is it a specific, uh, the facial recognition? So that is still under development. So yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, so our image classifications fall within the uh, uh, let's say um, mm, a context specific uh, classification of the image. For example, given an for example in the use case of uh, public order, given an image, so uh, people gathering. So are they gathering uh, uh, for fun, for celebration, or is it going to become violent? Yeah, so those kind of uh, context. Yeah. So can that be like uh, uh pull it? to other like wearable, uh, like for example, HoloLens or some other tools for like object detection and object recognition. Is that possible to link with these? Oh, okay. That involves like bringing that, uh, the image detection model out and uh, put it in yeah, the, yeah, yeah, the right. uh, Holo, yeah, HoloLens. Uh, that is still uh, uh, under development. So we have some capability uh, on that already. Um, yep. So in the form of a mojo, um, okay, a mojo is actually a model that you can uh, bring out and then you put put inside your HoloLens, put inside your uh, other devices in order to score it. So we have that uh, for, let's say for uh, uh, NLP and uh, other uh, uh, tabulated data uh, uh, model. Uh, for image, uh, so we have uh, uh, that capability, but uh, we are still uh, building up the, the that uh, to improve that capability even more, yeah. Yeah, because uh, so uh, we, we actually mm. would like to do something as like uh, deploy it to like uh, uh, the variables, but then uh, we have got a problem. Like for example, we have got a database, but then that cannot be deployed out. <laughs> There's something for uh, which I, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh. Okay. Let me show you another. Okay. Okay. You. Okay. You come. You, I would say you have come to the right place. Okay. <laughs> okay. Let me show you. Uh. Uh. Okay. Uh. We have this also for Singapore government. Uh, so it's, it's now being implemented in uh, one of the one of the most sensitive government department in uh, in uh, Singapore and uh, elsewhere and the United States as well. Uh, okay, and uh, yeah, and uh, health hospital as well. Okay, um, so. Okay, this one, this is, these are the model. That means uh, the, the one that I used to uh, uh, score on another data set to did on the, the unknown data to get the house price. So I did it all, I did it here. This one is inside here. I made use of what inside here in order to, to uh, get the predictor price now. So you have somewhere here that you are not allowed to bring the data out. And it's not connected to internet, not connected to, not even to, in, 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 uh, to intranet. Yeah, so what, what do you do with that? So you can bring the data out and put it here to make the prediction. So Drivers AI enables you to bring that model out, okay, out as portable, and then put it inside 
this area, secure area where you can't bring the data out and to make the predictions. And the results you can uh, store back in this area, the secure area, or you can have somebody like take out the result and put it back into your database. Yeah. So this is one of the key strength of drivers AI where which um, yeah, no other platform is able to do uh, to this extent reliably. Yeah. So it means that it can be like, it can be deployed out, right? So yes, out, yeah. Mm. But, now, but but by what area, means mm. is this is it uh like uh, a few lines of cooks or there are a lot of things that we have to include? Oh, okay. So back to uh, okay, back to this model. Okay, let me uh, uh, okay. Uh, so here that's a this one. Okay, so this is the how you bring the model out. You just download yeah. it. So you yeah. don't need to write anything. Yeah. And then you have uh, three options to choose from. And then you just download it. Okay, once you downloaded it, it gives you a zip file. The zip file contains everything you need to, to deploy it. Yeah, so you just need to uh, uh, at most uh, write some uh, simple code in order to make use of of this, yeah, because uh, uh, it's like yeah. the, the platform mm. is a simple code in itself. Because if a simple code is um, uh, something that we don't know, then it cannot be deployed as well. So, is there any like template mm. that we know how to like deploy it? Just uh, oh. change a bit of thing, like for example, the account, then we can deploy ah, it. Okay, okay. So, there is uh, another one called uh, uh, Python uh, uh, scoring pipeline. So, yeah. once you have downloaded it, yeah, okay, let me download this one as well. And then when, oh, okay, this one is a 400 megabyte. Uh, okay, uh, once you have downloaded this, if you open up, it has all the codes ready for you to run it. It all oh, okay. has a built-in like server, yeah. So that means you don't need to write like new codes, you modify, uh, you can modify uh, uh, whatever in, in there. Yeah, so, okay. Uh, we also have a quite an ex extensive and very comprehensive document documentations on uh, how to make good use of all this. Yeah, so if you go to docs.h2o.ai, yeah, so you click on the, this one, yeah, so it has a, it has a, all the uh, information that you need in order to uh, get started. It even has the, the uh, the that Python, uh, how to make use good, make good use of uh, uh, this Python scoring uh, pipeline here. And let's say if your data scientists are more tuned to R, you can also uh, make use of R. And, and so on and so on, yeah. So there is a, a free, uh, so what are the machine learning interpretability or explainability that we saw is a very high level, very sim uh, simple. And this book is uh, contains uh, 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 more details on that. The nuts and bolts of machine learning interpretability. So you can download uh, this uh, this book, yeah. It's a free, yeah. yeah. So there are other tutorials on how to, uh, how to use a driver's AI. So there's a video, yeah. So there is a, um, yeah, it's a, there's a lot of a vast amount of uh, informations, and uh, you can also you go to YouTube. So YouTube, and then you can uh, subscribe to H two O channel, yeah, and uh, so on and so forth, yeah. So that is okay. a, yeah, uh, yeah, and uh, what else? Okay, yeah. So that is the documentations uh, tutorial, yeah, and yeah, okay. Um, so another thing, uh, okay, the uh, one last thing that I want to uh, uh, bring is that, so, uh, which is the, the benefits of industries, industry skill uh, benefit for that. So what, what we have, uh, uh, we have just discussed that is actually the, this part. So it's a rapid screening of, uh, uh, I mean, uh, in, in, you can make the predictions like at a very large scale, like at a very, very fast pace. Yeah, yeah, in a very in a short period of time. So a properly trained model can make full use of prediction about properties of a candidate material. So in the uh, in the insurance, it could be the agents. In uh, housing, it could be yeah uh, uh, yeah the, the price as well. Or you can even even modify the data set that we saw the housing price. We modified it to predict one more thing, which is uh, not the price but how fast we did sell. So you can modify at one column. That column is the calculations of uh, let's say uh uh. The between the, the the date of purchase and the date of uh, uh, selling, so you might the time difference is how fast that it can sell. Uh, so uh, less than three months, you get it uh, selling fast. 
uh, and then uh, more than that is slow. So that's selling fast and slow and become your target, your new target in your classification. Yeah. So as an uh, uh, property agent, then you can have an idea on whether or not uh, this particular property is going to like sell in within three months. Yeah. So we, we also use this concept to predict like uh, 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 how likely a patient will come back to a hospital after you discharge it. Yeah, it's not just that uh, uh, coming back like in three months or coming back in six months. You can also do that, yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. So, so for the uh, regression, that is it's like XG boost, uh, distributed random forest, generalized linear model, gradient boosting machine, and also stack example, they can be used for like, yeah. uh, doing the prediction for like uh, the continuous yeah. variable. If yes, if as well as target variable Correct. for prediction. Yeah. 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 Mm. Okay, so any any questions from the floor? <laughs> it seems like all the questions come from me. <laughs> and then, <laughs> and then uh, uh, yeah, because I'm I'm actually very interested in uh, in the in in, okay. in in the software in itself. And then yeah. um, so any more questions? Sorry that we are we are overrun, <laughs> seriously overrun. Mm. And then, okay. uh, so thank you, thank you, thanks a lot for yeah, the speaker. Sure. Yeah. Then, uh, uh, please yeah. try to help us to fill the evaluation, give a very high score to the speaker of today. Uh, it's very nice, yeah. it's a very detailed yeah. uh, presentation. So, so yeah, you can get, yeah, you can get in touch with Shaders uh, for further information or uh, if you're interested in the NLP use case to predict the drug. And we also yeah, have yeah, marketing yeah, because use I, case. I, I, yeah. I, I also do like NLP <laughs> because I, I do NLP okay. for yeah. literature as well, yeah. Yeah, and uh, lately we have also uh, helped the government to predict if uh, there's a hidden message in the uh, in the text in the email uh, that people try to smuggle, uh, like uh, malicious information, uh, uh -huh. in, through email without being detected. So we are able to detect that as well. Yeah. So there are a whole bunch of things. That Another we section yeah. for the NLP. <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. So get in touch with shaders and uh, yeah, we'll, sure, we'll sure, 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 sure. Uh, yeah. Mm. Sure, sure. Thanks okay. a lot. Thanks a lot. And then thank you. Uh, so thank you for your attendance. Yeah, thank you. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. See you. Bye. See you. Bye. Bye.